Good day, everyone. I'm Nehemiah Frank, the founder and editor in chief of the Black Wall Street Times, and this is the Smitherin Report. I named this weekly vlog after A.J. Smitherman, who was a pioneer of Black news media in the early 20th century. He was the founder and editor in chief at Tulsa Star until it was burnt to the ground during the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. Some white Tulsans believe that A.J. Smitherman was a troublemaker, stirring up racial tension in his black owned publication. But to me, he was a hero. He fought white supremacy with a stroke of his pen and helped educate black people on the power of voting and reshaped public opinion. Today, we stand on his shoulders. And we're blessed for that courageous brother's discipline and profound ability to communicate effectively. And like Smitherman, we're here today in the digital era to continue the fight of racial justice through the strokes of our pens. Today, we're highlighting the three white police officers who sicked their German shepherd on a defenseless black man. A now viral video shows a black man being attacked by a police dog. The disturbing, video, the disturbing footage has sparked an investigation by the FBI. Cell phone videos show three white police officers allowing their German shepherd to viciously and repeatedly attack the black man. I want to warn you guys, this video is just a little disturbing. Um, hold tight. Yeah. I'm recording this. They brought a dog, Lord have mercy. Just say. You heard? Oh my God! Are you serious? You let the dog bite him? Just bite him. <laughs> So from the top of the video, the officers threaten to use their dog on the man if he, re if he resists the uh, officer's advances. The officer holding the police dog then releases the German Shepherd. The canine bites and attacks the man's feet and ankles. The officer then restrains the dog and then releases it again. The man clearly in distress can be heard yelling for help. Several vehicles can be seen slowing down and one car even hunks seemingly in disapproval at the police's actions. The woman filming the vicious attack shouts at the cops multiple times. To help give that black perspective are my two black uh, Black Wall Street Times colleagues, managing editor Dion Osborne and social justice editor, Black Sheep podcast co-host Mike Kreef. Welcome, guys. What's going on? Hey, Neo. Hey, Mike. What's up? All right. So um, what are your initial reactions to, as black men, being a black man being attacked in, in such a way? What are your initial reactions? Dion, you can go first, for sure. Um, my first thought was, I'm glad that this wasn't a situation in which, you know, the man died. Um, it's pretty sad when you have to watch something like this and be relieved at how it turned out. Uh, that was my initial reaction. Yeah. Uh, spot on like the fact that it didn't escalate even more is it's sad that in 2021 that is a relief um but yeah when i first saw i think the first thing i initially noticed when i saw the video is when the officer lets go of the dog you see like the other cops like jump back and like, almost like protect themselves i mean and it's, it just kind of shows you that okay this is probably this is a pretty vicious thing that's happening when even the other police officers who 
you know, are probably around this, this dog all the time. Uh, if they're one of the, its handlers or at least familiar with it, uh, it being in their department, the fact that they're afraid of it and they're jumping back when it gets released and, you know, and then, you know, please expect people who are having dogs um, released on them to remain calm. And, and it's like, you're, you don't, you don't remain calm when a, a, a German shepherd dog is released on you. So right. uh, that's what I, when I, when I saw that, I was pretty, yeah. And so do you think that the police officers were actually afraid of the dog if they knew the dog? Because the dog kind of knew who the target was. The dog wasn't going after the police officers. The dog was going after the black man. And right. you know, one of the things that uh, a lot of us don't learn in school, right, uh, are, uh, you know, how the slave patrol officers used to use hound dogs to uh, track down runaway enslaved people. And so that is exactly what this, this scenario reminded me of. Um, you know, the man is screaming. He's obviously worried that the dog is going to bite him. Um, and, and the police officer actually lets go of the dog. The dog bites the man multiple times. Uh, and then after that, it, the dog is still on the leash, right? The dog is actually on the leash of one of the, of, of the police officers who's holding him. He pulls the dog off, right? the two police officers get off of the man who's on the street with his face already pressed into the, into the pavement. Um, and then they, they suddenly they get up off of, off of this man. This is what I'm seeing, right? They get up off of the man and then the police officer, you can hear the police officer in the video say, bite him. And then the dog bites the black man again. That, Dion? You know, and yeah, you know, someone you know editing um, this piece, um, you 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 play devil's advocate and you and you go, okay, so so what are the police unions going to say? What are what is the chief? You know, what what is the the top brass going to say in defense of this? Right, because they always have some kind of defense. Um, but even in this situation, you know, the, the officer's own leaders didn't just automatically come out and defend his actions. You know, they acknowledge that it's under investigation, you know. So that right there tells you that there's an issue right there, uh, probably with their own protocol. But then one thing that really alarms me was, you know, what were we doing here? What was the goal? You know, if, if you're going to sick a dog on some, someone, which we believe the police shouldn't even be using because of its history with the slave trade, Right. Shouldn't the goal be to immediately apprehend the suspect, get him in handcuffs and get him in the cop car as quick as possible? You said yourself, the video shows it. They sick the dog on him. They release it. And they're, they're seemingly just watching, you know, like it's just entertainment. That's how that's the impression I got, that it was just entertainment for these guys. Absolutely. And, you know, the sad thing about this situation is it, it comes on the uh, on the death of the George Floyd uh, justice and policing uh, bill, you know, that that just seemingly died in Congress. And so, you know, what in what in the uh, Justice Floyd uh, and policing bill legislation, what in there could have either prevented this situation from happening or would uh, could have helped uh, the victim's defense? Uh, Dion? Well, for one, you know, you look at qualified immunity, which basically gives officers legal protections. So if they go out and commit um, abuse or, or misconduct, they don't have to worry about being sued individually. It's not gonna come out of their pockets. You know, if the lawsuit is successful, it's gonna always come out of the taxpayers' pockets, out of the city, uh, city funds, you know. But if you had qualified immunity eliminated, which the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act would have done, you know, maybe these officers would have thought twice um, before they committed this this act. I mean, you have bystanders. You have one, uh, a, a young black man um, walking past. The officer seems to, 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 to be telling him to, you know, hurry up and get out of here. You have a car, you have a car honk. And then after uh, the video keeps going, after uh, what, what we saw, you have another car that comes and is actually verbally arguing with one of the officers. Right. And so it's just all around. The optics don't look good. And if you had qualified immunity gone, I believe these officers would have thought twice about what they did. 
Absolutely. Um, we have a comment that just popped in. So uh, the steam pal said, yes, hound dogs and how they would lead them to escape slaves to then be recaptured. And I mean, in a microsecond, second, that's literally what happened when the police officer pulls the dog off and then turns around and lets the dog go and says, yeah. he says bite him. And then that's when the dog attacks the man again. It, it is horrible. Yeah, I mean, even as like the, you know, in the black community, I'm sure y'all remember, remember, can remember growing up, like generally speaking in the black community, like dogs aren't really, you know, something that is, is really pleasurable until probably much older. Like growing up, there's that generational trauma of, yo, know, dogs mean like you're going to get chased, you're going to get bitten, I, you know. In all of the movies we see uh, portrayed with black people, it's them running from dogs. And it's because of, Neil, like what you said, uh, back during, uh, you know, the, the slave owners using the dogs to try to recapture the enslaved, like that, that, that has, that trauma has gone throughout the generations up until today to where it's like, there's a general distrust. I mean, generally speaking in the black community when it comes to dogs, and then, you know, you get this, big old German Shepherd, this 80 pound dog. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, they know exactly what they're doing with that. It's interesting you say that because, you know, I have a dog. I, I think all of us, all three of us have dogs. And, um, you know, my dog is just, she's a little too nice. You know, sometimes I want her to bark at someone knocking on the door, you know, just to alert me. Um, but she wants to just lick them, right? But we'll be walking past someone and, and we walk past a black person and they instinctively maybe pick up their child or, or, you know, add some space. And I hadn't really thought about why they have why, you know, we have that reaction sometimes until until you said that, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just the generational trauma, you know, it's passed down. We were taught from parents and stuff that dogs are bad, like, you know, dogs will hurt you. Um, and, you know, and like you said, we, we all we all do have dogs and I've got a dog and but I'll be damned like if I ever have uh, a police officer sick a dog on me, you know, and, and it's a crazy a police expert uh, commented on this case just talking about how it's it's physically not even possible to remain calm when an 80 pound dog is attacking you and biting you. It's impossible. No one's going to remain calm. I'm probably going to try to whoop that dog's ass, to be completely honest. But of course, you know, with it being a police officer in their mind, I'm going to get in trouble for that. Um, but it's like, this is an animal, literally, that's trained to attack me and hurt me. And I'm just supposed to sit there and, you know, just take it. It, it doesn't make any sense. The, the justification for it, to me, doesn't make sense at all. That's really good. Um... Dion, is there anything else that our viewers should know about the article that was just published on the Black Wall Street Times? Well, I mean, you kind of hit it there on the on the the, hell, the nail on the head, Mike. Um, KSDK News Channel Five, based in uh, St. Louis, I believe, they had interviewed an expert who he had over thirty years of experience with deployment, um, training, and handling of police canines specifically. And they quoted him saying it's virtually impossible uh, to to just sit there and take that and just let someone calmly put you in handcuffs. They had several opportunities in that video to put him in handcuffs and they chose not to. Um, and so I think it's really important for our readers to understand that the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, uh, its failure to pass is going to have a profound effect on on these cases uh continuing and 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 you know luckily no one was was uh was killed um but you know with without some type of transformative federal policing bill that creates national standards for police use of force uh that 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 tracks misconduct across departments um you know that bans the use of chokeholds and 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 the use of of of, of deadly restraints you know, we're going to continue to see these kinds of videos. Um, and so it's just, it's, I don't, I don't really know what to, to say else about it. Um, it's a shame. Wow. Uh, well, that is all the time that we have today. You guys join us next week uh, for the Smitherin Report. We will be back possibly next Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday. This is our first episode. Uh, but anyways, make sure you share this video out. 
I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues, Dion Osborne and Mike Creef. And until next time, we will see you later. Thank you.